Now you are very lucky that you can do actually do these on your calculator and I'm going to show you how. OK, the first thing we have to do is turn on the calculator. And it's on, but I'll pretend I'm turning it on. Um, and then we are going to go to mode. Am I going to go to mode? <laughs> yes, that's what I do. I just click on mode right there. And I'm going to use my down arrow key to come down, 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 down to where real is blinking. Real is what's highlighted right now because we're in the real number system. We have to move to the complex number system. So with your right arrow key right here, you're going to move over to where the, the cursor, if you call it that, is blinking on top of A plus B I, and then you hit enter. Now, if you move your cursor up, you can see that A plus B I is highlighted. We're now, the calculator now, is in the complex number system. So, I'm going to make it smaller, and I'm going to say second quit, and I am going to get ready to write some complex numbers. And so this is what I want to do. Well, let's just do 3 plus 2i plus 5 minus 7i. We can add complex numbers. We can subtract complex numbers. We can multiply them. Let's multiply them and make sure that we get the same answer. I don't have to put that there. And then However, you do have to put the numerator and the denominator in parentheses. Okay. So that's what we're going to do. I am going to add now 3 plus 2, and you're going to have to be looking on your own calculator. Um, take my word for it that above the decimal key right here is a little letter I. Okay, so how I get that is I push the second button and then the decimal button, and that gives me an I. And then I close my parentheses, and then I hit a plus, and then open the parentheses, five minus seven, and then second decimal, decimal point, and close the parentheses. And then all I have to do is hit enter, And I find out that my answer is 8 minus 5i. And I, it's the same thing as if you did it by hand. 3 plus 5 is 8. 2i minus 7i is negative 5i. Now let's subtract. Parentheses. 3 plus plus two, second dot, minus 
parentheses, 5 minus 7 second dot. There you go, 3 minus 5 is negative 2, 2i. Now that negative negative will make it a plus. So 2i plus 7i are going to give us 9i, positive 9i plus 9i. Okay, can't wait to multiply. It's the multiplication and the division that are noticeably easier. Twenty nine minus eleven I. Now, what did we get when we multiplied here? Twenty nine minus eleven I. Woo woo. All right, now there is usually an extra step involved in this. Three plus to I divided by five minus seven I. Enter. Oh, that's like the scariest thing you've ever seen. But if you can keep from totally panicking when you see it, all you have to do is take a deep breath and then push, push the math button and you're going to math frack that very ugly number. There it is. And that is the answer we came up with, with a little prodding. Okay, so what you want to do, even if you don't want to do it, is practice a little bit. And then, unfortunately, to end all your joy, there is a part of the homework. Warning, you have taken no action. Yes, continue. There is a part of the homework that uh, uh, the calculator will not do for you, unfortunately. So we do have to talk about that, even though it's bad news. For instance, this. The square root of negative three. Now let's see what happens if I put it in the calculator. I actually don't know. The square root Square root, square root of negative three, the square root of negative three. Okay. Now that's a negative sign and not a not a minus sign. I'm going to hit enter. There you go. Look at that ugly beastie. And then you can try as you might to make it into a fraction, and it won't because the square root of three is an irrational number. This is from the square root of three. The I comes from the square root of the negative one. So you have actually got to do that by hand. That sounded kind of whiny, but it makes me feel a little whiny. And you can actually actually leave that answer the way it is unless you're specifically asked to turn it into complex form, like it says there. 
Isn't that cute? I mean, really, isn't that cute? Yeah, it says you have to type it in complex form. Fine. Zero, zero plus the square root of three. Come to the outside with the right arrow key on your keyboard and then hit I, which is supplied for you. Let's see. Yeah. Well, if they hadn't said put it in A plus B I form, you could just leave it like that. Square root of negative 75. We have to talk about these nasty things in your life. The calculator will definitely not do this for you. And there's, there's something more to this problem. We have to simplify the square root of 75. <clears throat> It's got the perfect square 25 as one of its factors. Now, the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 25 times the square root of 3. This is the only one that will not break down. This is irrational. So we're going to have I times five times the square root of three. But as long as you're having to put this in A plus B I form, your answer is going to be zero plus five times the square root of three, and then safely outside the radical, so you still have to simplify radicals when um, when your radicand, the number under the radical, contains a perfect square in it. This is called simplifying. Remember that, simplifying. Nobody likes it, but you've got to do it. Now, what else? There's another kind of problem. If it's in here, there's subtracting and adding. Here, this problem. This problem, probably the calculator will not do for you. Let's see. Um, 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 second, second dot. That, that gives me an I and then caret 15. What you've got is I raised to the 15th power. Will the calculator simplify that? Let me hit the right arrow key. Let's see. It does. OK, that'll work. But if the number there gets much larger, like I to the 63, It's doing it. Um, didn't used to, that's all I can say. Um, I'm really outstandingly, I may decide to buy this. Um, most of the calculators, the physical calculators, go crazy when they have to do this and it won't work. So what you'd have to do, let's make this the last thing we do today. You've got to do this by hand most of the time. 
unless your calculator is really new. Let's try this. I to the 35th power. The trick to doing this is finding out how many fours go into 35, because I to the fourth, you remember, equals one. So I'm going to divide four into 35. And well, four times nine is 36, so I'll have to do four times eight. Okay, eight. Four will go evenly eight times, and then there is a remainder. And the remainder is three. This is what that means. Four eight times, you're gonna have I to the fourth times 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 i to the fourth, times i to the fourth. Let me count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There are the eight i to the fourth. And then there's an i to the third. That's what the remainder is. So you're gonna have one times one times one times one times one times one, times one times one times i to the third, which is negative i. Which means all those ones times negative i is just negative i. And that's how you simplify an i raised to a power. Now finally, I saw another problem back here which I miss this kind of problem on a test, so I'm very sensitive to it. When I was a student, I've never forgotten it. Okay, I'm gonna make one like it. Close that down, make this big. Beware of problems like I'm gonna show you. Square root of negative four times the square root of negative um, um, six uh, 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 twenty five. Okay, well. This is the square root. You see what I did in the real number system, you can just do this. I mean, given that there is no such thing as the square root of negative four, they're both square roots. So using that rule, you can multiply these together, get the square root of 100, which is 10. And that's precisely what I did on a test. And I was sure I was right. And I was wrong. Got the test back bleeding red. Let's do this the right way and then you are free to go. Negative four. Square root of negative 25. Do do this. The square root of negative one times four times the square root of negative one times 25. That will give you the square root of negative one times the square root of four times the square root of negative one times the square root of 25. This will be I times two times I times five. This will be I squared times 10, which is negative one times 10, which is negative 10. That's the right answer. OK, you have now mastered. The complex number system and we're never going to go away. So um, if you changed your calculator to a plus B I, 
you can leave it there for the rest of the semester and for any higher level classes you go to. Okay. So you can tell all your friends, friends you went out of this world today to another dimension. And I will talk to you when? Tomorrow. When we will do more fun things. Actually, they are pretty exciting and I love them. Questions on any part of what we did? I think I do, Miss Barbara. It's only just finished. What now? I think I do. I I have it on the last uh, problem that we just did. Oh. Okay. So where it's I times five, we got I squared times ten. Uh, I thought I times five would give us negative five. Would that not be it? No. Uh. Uh. Okay. Can you no. explain why? Sure. Because I times I is I squared and two times five is oh, Yay! Okay. That yay! That makes so much sense. Because the square root of negative one isn't negative one. The square root of negative one is I. Makes sense. Okay. Thank you for clearing that up, Miss Barbara. Okay. Uh, do you still want to meet tomorrow or not? Tomorrow, I am actually working. Oh, okay. next week. Oh, dang it. Next week, we're on vacay, huh? We are, yeah, we are. but I can still meet. You okay with that? Yeah, sure. Okay. Let email, me me the, email me what time would be good for you. Okay, sounds good, Miss Barbara. I'll see you next week then, okay? Okay, bye-bye. Well, we're in class, but like next week for tutoring. That's right, everybody. Yes, spring, spring. Fall break is Monday and Tuesday. So no classes, but I'm glad to meet with people anyway. Okay, see ya. Thank you for doing.